Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 3125 to the power x, and that is equal to 1 over x, and we're going to be solving for x. To be able to solve this problem, we can use different methods. That's what I usually focus on. I'll be presenting at least two methods, and I can also talk about some maybe boundaries or bounds upper bounds, lower bounds, stuff like that, and we can also talk about those. So, when you get a problem like this, it's probably very typical to cross multiply because you usually want to get things on the same side, right? So let's go ahead and do that. If you multiply both sides by x, you get x times 3125 to the power x equals 1. So far, so good. Now, are you able to guess and check? Probably, but, but I think from that perspective, the original equation is better, and we'll get back to that later. In this scenario, we can actually go ahead and do something that makes it look like the following. We, we basically want to put this in t times e to the t form because this is a very special format and you can basically apply a special function which is called Lambert's w function and if you apply Lambert's w function to this as an input your output will be t easy right if you w t times e to the t the answer is t that's simple but we don't have an explicit way of expressing this function we can only define it as such the question is then, how do you turn this into that form? We have x times 3125 to the power x. We don't really have the x times e to the x, which would be really nice, but we can get there. How? By changing the base. So we want, to, we want this to be e, Euler's number, right? Because Euler is awesome. To change it into Euler's number, we're going to consider an identity, which is e to the power ln a is a. Easy, right? Obviously, if you're dealing with real numbers, you want a to be positive. If you're not dealing with real numbers, then you're probably dealing with complex numbers, imaginary numbers. And if you like them, I have another channel called a plus bi. Go ahead and check it out. Great. Now, how do we use that information? Well, it means 3125 is e to the power ln 3125. So I'm going to go ahead and replace 3125 with that. And of course, I need to raise it to the power x. So it's going to look like this, e to the power ln 3125. I hope you don't mind. I, I don't, I'm not using parentheses, but this needs to be raised to the power x and then it's equal to 1. You got it? I just directly substituted. Now, these are exponents, this one and this one, so they need to be multiplied. I want to write the x first. It looks better that way. So I'm going to write it as e, x times e to the power x times ln 3125, and then it's equal to 1. Now remember, the format we're trying to get is t e to the t, and we're getting closer and closer. So what should be your t then, right? Well, the t is supposed to be this one. Why? Because you can't really change that anymore. But you can change the x, right? You can multiply it by something to make it t. And this is your t. And if you don't like t, go ahead and call it coffee. Doesn't matter. I like t better. So now let's go ahead and multiply both sides by ln 3125. x times ln 3125 times e to the power x times ln 3125 equals ln 3125. So far, so good. Are you following? Now, here's the critical part. Once you do that, you're going to have to turn it into t e to the t. What is your t? This is your t, right? Or coffee, whatever. So this is t, this is t, and we're in good shape. t e to the t. That's what I was trying to get, and I did it, right? So now, if you w both sides, you're going to be wing w t e to the t, and that'll be t. And of course, that needs to equal ln 3125. So if you can solve for t, in other words, simplify the right hand side, then we can go from t to x because we can back substitute, right? Okay, let's do it.
it can be done. You just need to remember one thing. Where does 3,125 come from? If you look at the prime factorization of this number, which will give you a good idea what it looks like, you're going to realize, hopefully, that it's 5 times 625. And 625 is 5 times 125, and then 125 is 5 times 25, which is 5 times 5. To keep a long story short, this number can actually be written as 5 to the fifth power. Okay, is that a good thing? Absolutely. Look at this. The base and the exponent are the same. Beautiful. Now, what are we going to do with that though, right? So let's go ahead and replace this number with 5 to the fifth power. And on the left hand side, remember I have t for now and then later on I'm going to change it. t equals ln 3125, which is 5 to the fifth power. And then I'm going to write it as 5 times ln 5. Good so far? Now, you might be wondering, we were able to simplify it down to t. Yes, that's good. But what about the right hand side? This doesn't look simple. Well, it doesn't look simple yet, but we're going to do a little bit of focus focus, maybe a little math of magic. Okay, ready? We're going to write this as ln 5 times 5, but then I'm going to change the 5 to e to the power ln 5, and this is your new t. If you don't want to call that t, you can call it c, so that this becomes c e to the c. You got that? Awesome. Now what we can do is we can actually just apply this equation. What am I talking about? I'm talking about t equals c e to the c. But wait a minute, aren't you supposed to w both sides? Wait a minute, did I forget to do that? Oh, when I did w, I didn't do it on the right hand side. That's why I have a problem. Used to we have a problem, but don't worry, we can fix it easily. So this is supposed to be w of ln 3125, which is going to turn into w of ln 5 to the 5th power, so t is going to be w of ln 5 to the 5th power, which is going to be w of 5 ln 5, and then of course we're going to change it the exact same way like before, this is going to be w ln 5 times e to the power ln 5, and in order for you to be able to see what the t or c is going to look like, I'm going to change the colors here, so you can see Kind of like the thing uh, color coded like this makes sense so now this is t and now i can basically apply numbers w on this because notice that this is c times e to the c which is c by the way in other words this is equal to ln5 if you just apply the definition of lambert's w function that's what you're going to get so now we know that t is equal to ln5 but what is t let's go back and find out t is what is t? I forgot. Okay, I, I called something t somewhere. Here we go. t is x times ln 3125. x times ln 3125 is t, and that's equal to ln 5. How nice. Because we now know that this is ln 5 to the fifth power, so it's like gonna, it's going to be like x times 5 times ln 5 equals ln 5. And then if you go ahead and cancel out ln5, you're going to end up with 1. And finally, divide both sides by 5, and you're going to get x equals 1 fifth as the only solution. At least if you're looking for real solutions. If you're looking for complex solutions, go ahead and check out a plus bi. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the second method, because I think the second method is awesome, but you're going to decide which method is awesomer, okay? So we have 3,125 to the power x equals 1 over x. Now, without getting into the nitty-gritty of the Lambert's W function, I'm going to keep it simple and raise both sides to the power 1 over x. You might be questioning about why am I doing it? Well, there are different ways to get the x's on the same side, and this is another way of getting them on the same side. Because notice that these x's cancel out, leaving us with something nice like 1 over x to the power 1 over x equals 3,125. But you probably already know that this is 5 to the 5th power. Now forget about 3,125 and just write it as 5 to the 5th power. What does this tell you? I don't know about you, but I think this tells me that if 1 over x is equal to 5, then I have a solution. Is there another solution? That's a good question. But if you look at the value of 5 to the 5th power, which is very, very large, so there's no way you can get another a value from here. Because if you think about the graph of 
x to the power x like this in the real axis. By the way, that's 0 to the power 0, and it's 1. I know some people are going to object to this, and they're going to say, no, it's not 1, it's undefined, it's a limit. No, no, it's not a limit, it's a value. Check out my video on 0 to the power 0. It's also in the description. Anyway, so the idea is when you have a really large y value, the x value that makes it possible can only be unique. Make sense? I hope it does. So from here, we have to have 1 over x equals 5, which implies x equals 1 over 5. Awesome. Now, let me tell you how we could kind of know what the answer is going to look like, okay? Because we have some clues which I wanted to talk about real quick. Now, take a look at this expression. First of all, if x is greater than 1, 3,125 to the power x is going to be, in other words, the left-hand side is going to be greater than 3,125. Think about it. If you squared 3,000 something, you get, you know, 9 million, right? Something. So if x is greater than 1, left-hand side is going to be real, really big. Right-hand side is going to be like a fraction, 1 over something. There's no way they can be equal. So x cannot be greater than 1. If x is less than 0, the left-hand side is going to be like 3,125 to the power negative 5, let's say. It's going to be a fraction, very, very small fraction, right? Because think about flipping this number and squaring it, cubing it, whatever. But the right-hand side is going to be negative. There's no way this can be negative, so x cannot be negative either. What do we have left? Then x needs to be either greater than 0 or less than 1. In other words, x needs to be on this interval. But if you think about it, I mean, you don't have to really think, think too much about it. x cannot be 0, right? So uh, that's out of the question. And x equals 1 is not a solution either. So we kind of have like a strict inequality where x uh, is between 0 and 1, strictly, right? So what does that tell you? That tells you that x needs to be a fraction. And now you can go ahead and guess. I want to raise this number to a fractional power, which means I'm going to take the root of this number, and that's going to be the reciprocal of a fraction, which is probably going to be a whole number. When you think about it, and if you know that this is 5 to the 5th power, I probably need to raise it to the power 1 5th, because that gives me 5, which is 1 over 1 5th. Make sense? <laughs> it checks real quick if you do this inspection right away. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.